Plum's Metaphysics and Investigation, A Visit, and A Short Funeral Ode, in memory of William Carlos Williams. O oh, Muse, I don't dare summon you. All I ask is that I might come to you, only to see you, only to look at your face. If you're too mad or too busy for a talk, I'll go home soon. Smog this morning, hot soupy sun. The mailman brought all the wrong letters. The air stinks. The birds are in somebody else's yard. Boys left a yellow broom in the plum tree. The plums are still green, however fat. I hear the scavengers' protective association complaining about the garbage cans. I worry about the fragility of my verses, their failure to sound fresh and new. By God, there's the garbage men stealing green plums. The neighborhood boys must go after them. Free food. How can a tree, who is an individual, belong to a man? It can't be stealing. The tree manufactures these not quite yet sweet, sticky plums. My mouth is full of plastic teeth. Most adults are smokers. We have no idea about the taste of plums, except perhaps a memory climbing a tree. St. Augustine had the shame of it all his life, he says. I think of him, seeing these kids up the tree, their silly yellow broom too short, the trees old and brittle, unsafe to climb, the pears, in his case, being hard as well as green, to say nothing of the sin which he never worked out, a soulful bellyache his whole episcopal saintly eternity. No death, no dying for him, alas. The pears of Africa pursue him past the heavenly gates. I can still hear something rattling in my head, perhaps only the little rocks that keep it pointed toward the sky, otoliths, ear stones, which is now the wind, although I see fog and smoke linger over the bay, three loader cranes on a ship, gantries in the fog, flash car freeway ramp, more stinking smoke, which was my ears rattling an approaching poet, Ronald Lowenson, with news from out of town, considering the study of English, a long trip to the northwest with his wife and son for August. I envy them. I've been thinking of going home. I still think of it, although it has nothing to do with me, wants nothing from me, to Oregon all this spring. Hard as it is, I'm hungry, in debt. I own one penny copper money, USA. I'm still alive. I dance alone in this borrowed room. I sing to myself, green plums. You won't be ready for weeks, but I'm fat and purple, full of sweet delight, hidden among bright gold leaves. It is her wish that I be so. A wasp bounces up and down one of the closed windows. Two other windows are open. He must take care of himself, I say, but I worry for him just the same. Goofy June bug, forgotten poet, morning stomp. And the plums, the voices, the presence of Lowenson, all these brought you in, Williams, quite naturally, making my head rattle. Your gentle spirit, goofier than you've shown yourself to us in the past, really goofier than I ever gave you credit for being. I mean, the insane poetical rage that you tried to channel, to subdue, notions I hate. Rather the fury and madness than the control of Messrs. X, Y, and Z, who must of course believe they're also in control of literature, American literature. They never really let you into that, in spite of your book that all professors love, in the American grain, that fills my shoes with sorrow and gets between my teeth. I want to be a world, not just another American tinky poety boo. I am a universe, etc., well, anyway, I never knew you well enough to call you Bill, and you were either my father or not. And I did say a couple of days ago, I sometimes think of you as a little no-talent middle-class croaker. You did know the madness of love and sorrow. Why should I have wished on you? Oh, the crash of symbols, rending of live flesh, glare of torches, total battingness, frenzy, typewriter out the window, and Cowley's plum tree... How explain about the broken window and chair to the cranky landlady? Hart Crane, go away. You are too much, and we don't really believe you write so good as all that. Your head fell apart gently, piecemeal, a slowly oozing, ripening cheese. Wreath song. Liederkranz. An American invention. It was painful to watch, even eight years ago when I last saw you. Not quite articulate. And your hands terribly crimped. Yet delivering yourself your love to us. I got the window to open just this minute and prodded the wasp out into the wind. And you said, Yes, you remembered me. Now I remember you, naturally. 
dead or alive, as the notices used to say. And you are wanted, not necessarily, New Jersey, USA, here with us, wherever plums and poets talk together.